to the Stop Hub Center in Carson, California, with the U.S. two up against Chile at the start of the second half, and three changes from the U.S., bringing on Carly Lloyd, the two times World Player of the Year, Mallory Pugh, and McCall Zerboni, midfield player, off go Lindsay Horan, Alex Morgan, and Rose Laval, who I think uh, made her case very eloquently in that first half and will be saved for another day. She has nothing more left to prove. Sayers getting it away for Chile. How will they reorganize, I wonder, at the uh, start of the second half? Claudia Soto has come on for them. Midfield player. Aido's gone out to the right-hand side. Might be damage limitation a little bit for them. And uh, Daniela Zamora has come on to play out front in place of Santi Banez, I believe. Six substitutions allowed. US's time for experimentation has probably been and gone now with the World Cup under a year away. 19 players were given debuts by Jill Ellis since the last Olympics in 2016, but only six of them are in this particular squad. They are determined to play their soccer from the back. So just confirmation of those substitutions going on on the uh, top left of your screen there. Tobin Heath is off as well. Guerrero has picked up an injury. A player whose name literally means fighter. And she is something of a warrior defender, important for Chile, but with an own goal against her name tonight. She's also a target on set pieces if they ever were to get one, scoring a goal against Argentina in qualifying. We get to see what's happening to us here. Challenge with Julie Ertz, and she lands awkwardly. She's slow to get up, shaking out her arm a little bit. It's an interesting role that Carly Lloyd has as Crystal Dunn pushes forward. The goalkeeper, again, not that convincing on crosses. Good shot stopper by the look of it. Not so good when the ball's in the air. The uh, much vaunted Endler. Well, I think that's due to Carly Lloyd. Dunn hits his ball in that no man spot where whether or not Endler is going to be able to get some pace on it. But look at Lloyd's run. She's sitting on the back shoulder of the defender, then decides to burst free and time it when she gets it. And just not a strong enough hand from Endler. And she bounces a straight rebound and in the middle. The U.S. didn't have enough numbers inside the box to capitalize on that bouncing ball. Free kick here to Chile. I wonder what went on at halftime by way of discussions about that penalty at the end of the half. I'm sure Jill Ellis must have sought a word, at least with the referee, for, at least for some clarification. I'd be longing to know how that conversation went. I actually probably think she left the referee alone and allowed someone else and her staff to do it while she went and calmed the team down because the team was so irate. At that point, she needed to get him refocused. Up forward by Julia, who's definitely stayed on the pitch. Hacked away by Guerrero, who seems to be uh, all right again. Lopez down injured here. The latest casualty for... Chile. AJ, AJ, AJ. She looks in some pain as well down there. Jill Ellis has done a very, very good job, really, in charge. Of course, she spent 11 years as coach at UCLA, didn't she? She did. In this she, city. She was an excellent recruiter and then came on as an assistant coach as a scout. You get to see Lopez knocking knees, goes down at an awkward angle, and then gets contact. Oh, yeah. And just bends at an unnatural angle. You hope that's just an impact injury and not Anything something, else? yeah, something worse. There's been interesting research been done about women's soccer because of the different physiological nature of women that they're more prone to ACL 
injuries are a lot more prone. Yeah, welcome to our world as yeah. women. Just the, the ratio between quad strength and your hamstring strength. If it's too out of skew, the quad's naturally going to be bigger than your hamstring. If it's too big of a differential between the strength of the two, you're more prone and susceptible to tear your ACL. That is fascinating, and, and of course it means really that the players have to be trained and do their prep in, in different in different ways. And they have done that. You see that in warm-up. Both teams were doing pep or uh, movements that can help learn to stabilize your leg a little bit, pre prevent chances of an ACL. But there's so many factors, hip size, hip angle, knees. I mean, there's so many things going on, but there are some things you can do, and stabilization is the number one proactive preventative thing. It's a great ball from Morgan Brown out here to Mallory Pugh who's come on in the second half of defence make a real mess of dealing with that they had several opportunities press that went out of play will be a goal kick this time ESPN's presentation of US soccer brought to you by Arby's Arby's we have the meats Still only two goals, and it not for three after that uh, extremely contentious decision to disallow Kristen Press's penalty from standing. Here is Carly Lloyd. 35 years of age now, but desperate still to be involved. Twice named as the World Player of the Year 2015-2016, a stellar day in the last World Cup final. I don't see how you could not have her on the roster. She always has her best performances in the biggest moments. It's a great tool if she is going to be on the bench to come off. Imagine as an opponent seeing Carly Lloyd coming on the field in the 70th minute, knowing what she's capable of. One of only six players to score 100 goals for the US women's team. She's on exactly 100 at the moment. Tina Davidson, I think the tribute really to how good her distribution is from the back, that she is in charge of the set piece here. You wouldn't often see a central defender taking one in this advanced a position. She's left-footed. Yeah. Curled beautifully into the area. This time Chile defended a little bit better. I'm sure the coach had a strong word at half-time about his defenders being a little bit more aggressive and proactive in going to win that ball. Yes, very much in charge. McCall Saponi. There is the coach, Jose Letelia. Interesting story about him. A long time ago, 1987, the Alianza Lima team in Peru, their plane crashed very sadly. 44 people lost their lives. They needed players. Letelia joined them to help out from Colo Cole in Chile. To help that club try to regenerate after those terrible events. Viewers on ESPN2 joining us now as the USA lead Chile, who will be at the World Cup for the first time in France next summer, but have found the US a bit too hot to handle, generally speaking here. That's a miscue by goalkeeper Elisa Neo, who's very much now established as the number one. She's started 21 of the last 25 games for Jill Ellis. Place for Chicago Red Stars. If you're just joining us, we can recap what's happened so far for you. Most of the trouble for Chile has come from corner kicks. Well, uh, Real Tiana Davidson with the first one. The other one was an own goal after a good header from Juliet. Guerrero couldn't quite keep it out and helped it into her own net. It should have been the third, a penalty. We think the goal wrongly disallowed. But the referee didn't. And, uh, disallowed it for encroachment, though the encroachment was initially by a Chilean player. Camila Saez looks pretty composed on the ball. 
back there. It's obvious this coach wants his team to pass the ball and play football. That, of course, does have hazards, particularly when the opposition's that good. That ball did it cross the line. Press couldn't force it in. Lloyd denied. Underside of the bar. How's your luck? And again, no goal for Kristen Press as the ball came out as well. Here's Crystal Dunn. Nearly a third again here for the US. And this is all Carly Lloyd. Zerboni comes in, steps in. And what's great about this is how close all these players are together. That separating touch, Carly Lloyd loves to take that long touch, gets her body ready, gets underneath the bar and bounces down. But this, to me, that looks like a goal. Well, that's interesting. The old goal line technology, if it was in existence, would that have counted? Disallowed for a push. And Lloyd's denied again. Kristen Press attacking it as well. How is it still only 2-0? It is. <laughs> There's no reason why this game is 2-0. It should be 4 at this point. The two uh, booze and howls of derision from the crowd. Here's Ertz now for the US. Emily Sonic. It's Tiana Davidson. One of the two college players. Lloyd tries to bend one, didn't really get hold of that one, but uh, the US denied another goal here. Was there pushing and shoving? Let's have a look. And it's the, I think it's the hold. It's Carly Lloyd Son with the header. It's Carly Lloyd with the header. Look at Sonnet holding the arm, but what a quality ball now by Tierna Davidson. The naturally left-footed player out on the field right now. And I have to say the quality of service from the set pieces has been fantastic from the corner corner area spot. For those of you who've been watching the game on ESPN News, we've now moved over to ESPN2 and you can uh, watch the game there. No telling what might happen next here. <laughs> Actually think that decision was probably fair and square. That last goal being disallowed. Carly Lloyd won't think so. She's hit the underside of the bar, had the ball Two in now. the net, and uh, nothing doing either time. Well, there's two opportunities now where she's decided to strike it from 25 yards out. One, she was connected on. The second one, not as much. The Chilean defenders are now starting to step to her. That'll open up pockets of space. If she decides to lay it off, you see Morgan Bryan and Kristen Press getting in the spots that she just left. And she dump it in and set play a little bit as well. Ertz uh, with a bad ball that time, dispossessed in midfield. Can Chile take any advantage? No, guns too quick by Ido. And that's been the story, really. The US, one of the elite teams of world women's soccer, just a yard quicker everywhere. And that's a good ball again. Pew to lay it in. It must be pressed this time. Yes, at last she does have her goal on home territory. And the US do lead 3 0. It was beautifully set up, that goal. Wonderfully fashioned. And Press does put it away. This comes with an excellent through ball in between the seams to Morgan Bryan. Look at the perfectly weighted ball. And Mallory Pugh seeing some time coming back from injury, being unselfish, realizing there are other players who have a better angle. Lloyd gets enough of the ball get away from Endler, and it's Press with the determination to keep her run going that is able to finally have that one count. Didn't only get a watch tonight to mark the 100th cap, got a goal as well at last. Get some bling, get on the scoreboard, took it Friday night. Quiet night 
really for Becky Saber and, and Tiana Davidson defensively anyway they have very little to do and Elisa Nea well I'm not saying she she could have brought a book tonight but um, she's had very very little to do bar turning a shot over the the bar here's uh, Sam Mewis to come on now to state her case the 25 year old who plays for their league leaders North Carolina Courage and she'll replace Crystal Dunn so she'll go into the central midfield, drop Ertz back. You see Tierna Davidson come out on the left outside back. Here's a spot I would love to see a little bit of extra versatility from her. I think she's a quality player with excellent distribution and building out of the back. Now she's going to be placed in the outside back area. And the only difference that is the angles of defending that you have to take. You're usually isolated out there. It'll be fun to see how she does. Maria Jose Urutia has come on for Chile in their latest change. There will be some tired legs and maybe some mental exhaustion as well for Chile because they've been chasing shadows and that could be very, very tiring, playing without the ball for long, long stretches of the game. They haven't been able to hold possession for long. Lopez this time. Think that uh, Daniela Zamora could do with that. Well, he'll be calm. He's seen a lot as player and coach. There's no question about it. I think Chile will be better for the experience. They'll know where they're short and how big the gap is between themselves and the top players in world soccer. Well, they didn't get, they haven't been beaten in behind really, right? Except for the last goal. They haven't gotten bypassed and it, just a long vertical threat. They are getting dominated in midfield. They'll need more numbers like they did against Brazil. They packed four in there. They put five in the back and only one up top if they want to not leave such big gaps for others to exploit. So I have to lay this ball forward. Here's my calls at Boney. Sauerbrunn wide, headed on by Davidson. Made off the outside of the boot, and a knock for Araya there. A muscular challenge from uh, Zerboni, another player from North Carolina Courage, who are definitely, of course, into the playoffs, their exploits in the uh, NWSL so far. McCall Zaboni, the oldest player ever in US women's soccer history to make a, a debut. Did it at the age of 30. So never give up hope. <laughs> Only her sixth cap here tonight. Here she is on the ball now. Sam Lewis. Eating up the space in the midfield, Lloyd. Leighton's gone over to a more normal position at left back. She struggled out of position on the right against Tobin Heath in the first half. Davidson to play this one wide again. Here is Press. Lewis belatedly reacted and didn't get there in the end. That was a cute ball, really, by Kristen Press. Twelfth corner coming up here for the USA. And that's the last thing Chile won. They've been winning all these headers. They've won that one as well. Ertz couldn't quite turn it in on the back post. Comes out to Davidson. Deflected behind by Rocio Soto for a corner kick. There's been no adaptation from Chile. They're still keeping two players on the 18, worried if that the U.S. is going to bounce it back. And instead of marking Carly Lloyd, who's wide, if you're going to play zone, fine, but have enough numbers in your zone. You don't have three players out of it. That's the thing, the goalkeeper's struggling on the cross. And you really need that big goalkeeper, Zeboni, uh, trying to make progress there. Endler, the goalkeeper, the goalkeeping coach is really going to have to work with her between now and the World Cup on dealing a little bit better because every team in the World Cup is going to be watching the tape of this and saying, hello, we're in business here. It's just not strong enough hands, is it? 
hadn't been able to push it and ferry it away from danger. Coming up to the three-quarter point in the game. Sabron again. Apparently one of Becky Sabron's way of relaxing as time went by after her little crises of confidence was to pack a suitcase full of books. Half a suitcase full of books. Keep reading. That might be everybody's cup of tea. It would be mine. <laughs> Partly, anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're speaking to the lady here who read War and Peace. It's a private conversation. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> Lewis couldn't make anything good in that one. So Lewis was injured for the first half of the year. 38th cap for her tonight. do have a lot of choices in midfield and attack the US. It's almost an embarrassment of riches. And when it comes to it, picking the squad, somebody's going to be disappointed. Maybe more than one person. Yeah, the amount of players on in form right now. Unparalleled. Press cuts inside after the mistake by Ado. And can't wrap her foot around the ball to finish it. So, Continental Tire Analyst Corner, what's it going to be? I think the United States is going to keep this dominant performance they have with 22 straight wins and maintain that going all the way through qualifying and then some against first-time opponents. Look at that. It's just not only are they dominating, they're leaving an impression that in the future games, in the future times you face each other, the intimidation factor, that's what you're playing for. I always remember every single throw-in we contested. Every single time the ball came out and it was 50-50, you called for every foul. You went in hard, and it didn't matter what the byline was. It was more about leaving that mark for next time. And the next time, it's coming up on Tuesday for Chile, and it's press in again. Tell you what, Rosario Soto did well there. She did just enough to pr press off, and that's the defender's job. A reminder of that Tuesday game, USA play Chile again, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN2. This one at the Avaya Stadium in San Jose and streaming live on the ESPN app as well. Soto couldn't keep it in play. We're going to bring on uh, Claudia Soto. Sometimes takes charge of the set pieces when she's involved for her 20th cap, the defensive midfield player. And I think they need the fresh legs as well. Chile, Muis here, did that guard a play? Looks suspiciously like it. End of the goalkeeper, certainly thought so. Australia in Seattle last year. It was last year's Tournament of Nations. The Australians with a lot of experienced players and uh, of course when they met this year it was 1-1 again with Australia 1-0 up right to the last minute of the game. So Australia might be dark horses, maybe not even dark horses for the World Cup. No, after how they perform in the Olympics, they're not dark horses. The difference between this year's tie and last year's defeat by the United States team was their performance in the game. Last year they got out outplayed by Australia. Australia took it to them, was by far the better team. This tie in the Tournament of Nations, they actually had the run of play in the second half. I talked to the head coach of Australia, Alan Stanich, today, and he was like, yeah, they were better. We just lost our composure a little bit. They put us under so much pressure, we weren't able to be composed on the ball.
interesting to see how the story evolves. Morgan Bryan over her injury problems now. Experienced midfield player. Who played in the 2015 World Cup final. Her confidence will grow all the time. Needs the minutes, doesn't she still? She needs to get fit and confident at this level again. She's putting together some 90-minute performances for the Chicago Red Stars. A great connector, able to keep the ball circulation going in that midfield. And here's another player, Mallory Pugh. Her quality of service on the flanks. Someone who's so good taking players on 1v1. She's only scratching the surface of her potential. Only Mia Hamm and Christy Welsh have scored more goals for the USS teenagers. 11 already for Mallory Pugh. Mewis making her presence felt, cutting it back, not quite for Carly Lloyd, who definitely wants a goal tonight. You can see it. She's been unlucky not to get one, truthfully. 20 minutes to go. There might be quite a long 19, 20 minutes here for uh, Chile as Lloyd plays it in. Guerrero gets it already. It's coming straight back again. This time Morgan Brown's touch was a little on the head and side. That cost her. Rutia now for Chile. Paul Zaponi, nice ball, Hugh turning inside, still something maybe, Mewis, and uh, once again Chile just get away with it. Everybody with the lights out on their, uh, lights on on their smartphones. defence there for the moment. Sonic down the line. Lloyd, lovely ball through but offside. Morgan Bryant. There's been more than one cameo of some sweet creative football from the US but they've had a lot of space to exploit, haven't they Kate? Especially on the right hand side and it's all about the triangles that created with Lloyd coming back into set play. Morgan takes the space that she left able to run through and we have the other collegiate coming in to get some playing time coming back from an injury Haley Mace getting some minutes yep, the UCLA 19 year old Haley Mace coming on for her second cap youngest player on this uh, 23 woman roster on her first cap in April against Mexico Quite a crop of UCLA products who've made it through to the national team. Arutia, yellow card. Arutia pleading her case, but she's absolutely wrong. And it's more just the viciousness. She came in afterwards. You didn't quite see it from that angle. She kept following through. She goes into the book for that. Okay, it will be uh, Davidson to take it. So we're on home territory again in San Jose from uh, Menlo Park from the Bay Area. Since Abby Dahlkemper, who won't be involved tonight, is in this squad and I think will play. Uh, that second game is a miscue to me by uh, Claudia Soto, and it'll be a corner. I think they're tired now, aren't they, Chile? You can see that. And just that endurance, physically and mentally, against teams that don't get together a lot or play in leagues that may not have the athleticism that is required to keep up the United States. This is the common byproduct that you see. 
The festival of corners for the USA continues. This is number 14 of the night. Davidson's even taking those on the right-hand side. Did that stay in play? Yep, it did. Quarter of an hour remaining. Actually, at least doing better than the last time USA played an opponent for the first time. That was Romania two years ago. The result on that occasion was 8-1. also a 14-0 win over the Dominican Republic in 2012, 10-0 against Puerto Rico in 2016. Puerto Rico is uh, attracting a pretty good crowd for one or two recent games and making a bit of a statement they want to be taken more seriously. Good chase there by uh, Zamora, nearly getting there. A rare foray forward for Chile. Zaboni, such a consistent player in the National Women's Soccer League. Mallory Pugh has taken the eye, it's uh, offside. And Pugh set up the third goal beautifully. Of course, we should, being on the air for the first time uh, with soccer since Clint Dempsey's decision to retire, just reflect what a player. Thanks for the memories, Clint. Big game player. Look at that. 57 goals. He ended, ended up level with Landon Donovan. Never quite got the record on his own in 141 games. He scored at three World Cups, scored lots of goals in England for Fulham in the Premier League and Tottenham as well. And it, here come the US again. Few denied. Out to press. That time Endler did well. But it's last ditched up here by Chile now. Camilla Sayers is the player down injured. A quick word from you about Clint Dempsey. I Just mean, my favourite goal of his is, is the chip yeah, for Fulham it, against it's Juventus. It's so good in the side corner. I think there's just too many to choose from. You just always know there's excitement because he's unpredictable on the ball. Yeah. For a country with a men's team that for a long time, a lot of effort, very disciplined, organised, that next generation that he was a part of brought a little bit of something different in addition to keeping the effort and the hard knocks mentality in that cycle so fun to watch. I think he'd be much missed. His craft, his feistiness, his just general nous and big game temperament as well. Just a competitive edge. I remember going to Genoa and him getting the winner away to Italy as well. We'd watched him in training the night before. Every time the ball came to him, he scored. Every time, I'm happy saying to somebody, if he gets a chance, he's going to score. He did. Goodness. First time the USA had ever beaten Italy away from home. Here's the corner for the US here. And again, they don't deal with it. Chile and Carly Lloyd can't believe she doesn't have a goal. The aerial dominance of this team is just, it's unfathomable that they're still getting on to everything. Guerrero this time coming in from a weird angle. Trying to put a little pressure. Does enough for Lloyd not to get something on it. Too much traffic to get up and over it to keep it down. But you never have to worry if Carly Lloyd's going to be ready to play, no matter how many minutes she does get. 258th cap for her tonight. Number five on the all-time list of appearances. Jenna Davidson. No problems and alarms for the Chile defence on this occasion. The only players to play uh, in the World Cup for the United States at the age of 36, Christine Rampone and, and Christ Christine Lilly. Will Carly Lloyd join that? This has got to be a free kick. It's just outside the box on this occasion. Yellow card for Osio Soto.
the U.S. doing a great job sitting in the gaps between the back line and the midfield. That Sammy was their body in the right direction. Ten a little bit, Soto, Soto bringing her down just outside the box. And Tierney Davidson again with that quality left foot, the one to step up to it. And Mewis coming over. Predominantly right-footed. She decides to serve it. She'll be looking for Lloyd and Sane on the back post. But again, this is close enough for her to have a go herself, really. Just over 20 yards, nice angle for a right footer, not too wide of the goal either. Lewis has got seven goals for the USA in her career to date. The player's gone down there, off the ball. Harley Lloyd's shaking her head as if to say, uh, I don't know why, it's Camilla Saez who's gone down. What exactly happened? Was she trodden on here? Yeah, Carly Lloyd steps on her foot. Yeah. Yes. Ooh. And now she's getting treatment for some cramp as well to go to go with that when they need the rest, I think, that defense. ESPN Plus has a full slate of Major League Soccer action tomorrow with seven matches highlighted by Columbus Crew and NYCFC from the Marfrey Stadium. Coverage of that match begins at 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPN Plus. Start your free trial now. And on Tuesday at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN2, we'll have the U.S. women's national team in a second match against Chile from the Avaya Stadium in San Jose. Just a painful one, that. There'll be a bruise there tomorrow morning, if not tonight. Lewis is backing away from this as if she rather fancies a hit. But what that does is for Saez out. Playing a man down, trying to cut through the coverage. Here's Mewis. It's not a great effort, really, straight into the wall. Not what she was intending. Deep cross, and this time Ender is able to deal with it. And tries to set up a counter-attack. Aido hasn't been able to get in the game. Then a little spark plug player that they like to get on the ball. But I think what this game will have taught Chile is how they need to improve when they don't have the ball. And that's going to start with the formation shift for me, especially when you're playing against a team that is that mobile and athletic. They shut down the vertical threat with people getting in behind, but there was too much space in the inside wide pockets for Rose Lavelle in particular because she was a little bit higher than Haran on the other side to create triangles with the attackers. Lutier, I mean the better of Tiana Davidson. Now they've got a few red shirts in support of the attack. But Claudia Soto's ball, while it looked quite good, and straight to a white shirt. And once again, possession is squandered, but the USA do exactly the same, this time with Lloyd. Carly Lloyd having to accept a different kind of role. She's only started three of the last 16 USA internationals now. But like you said, there's still a role for her to play. Sayers, who seems to be all right again after being trampled on. Sometimes in this situation, you sometimes see more knowing players go down to take a rest more than anything. To take a break, <laughs> yeah. need a breather. Yeah. Couldn't blame them, really. It's been a, a hard day's night for Chile here. This game being shown live on television in their home country. Amid rising interest to see how they might do. And there should be no comparison about this team and how Colombia have played the United States. Colombia sat back and made it very difficult to break down. 
Awesome. Great ball to Morgan Bryan here. Tries to find a half a yard to get a shot away. Wasn't the best cross that time by a few. Too near the goalkeeper, and this time Endler's able to turn it over the bar. Her first game for the US as a 20-year-old, Mallory Pugh. <laughs> It's just crazy to be that good, that young. But what I love is her growth in game as the games have gone on. It's her first uh, game for the US for eight months. For her injury, Mewis has been much involved since she came on. This time the red shirts again. You see, they just cannot hold on to the ball. It's always coming back again. fair to Chile they've kept working and doing the best they can but this is a very very steep mountain just confirmation of what I was telling you earlier that uh, she's right up there among goals scored as a teenager for the US Lloyd and look straight at her either side that's in because it was really hit well Lloyd once again, again Endler denies her, goes out to Morgan Bryan, back into the mountain, what Lloyd once again, how many times has she been denied, Carly Lloyd, I reckon it's half a dozen. <laughs> well you know what she's going to do the minute she gets the ball anywhere around the box, she's going to go for it, so as a player you need to adapt for that, I love that so many US players are showing to be that outlet press, you'll see Morgan Bryan trying to get into that seams. But then you also have to be that player to recognize that she wants to go for it. What about the rebound? Because she hits it with so much pace, arguably the, with the most pace on the ball at anyone on the U.S. team. It's very difficult for most goalkeepers to hold on to that ball. Carly Lloyd being used as a well, kind of a false number nine, to use the uh, modern phraseology tonight, looks to be enjoying it as well. That's yeah, great. You don't have to defend. You can kind of just <laughs> go up and play. She has no problem defending, never one that you have ever had to get on as a former race to play with her to be like, come back and defend. She did it willingly, did it automatically. She's always known the way to goal as well. Guerrero defends that one well. And then Leighton completing the clearance and staying down. One or two of them going down with cramp. Confirmation 100 goals in 258 appearances. Lewis's effort, by the way, Alex Morgan is on 90, sure to get to 100. Really, the way this game has gone, if, if you're chilly, I think you take 3 0, don't you? going to be happy with it the fact that they didn't give up not that you would expect a world cup team to do that but you do see that the dom when the performance has been so dominant lloyd again picks out a good ball newis was looking for a spectacular volley around the edge of the box here she is again this time a better half volley again they get a red shirt in the way they've tried to play their passing football chile but they've been pressed out of possession quickly, and frankly, some of their passing hasn't been good enough. This one keeps on coming back, and here it is again. Corner kick. If you're watching us on the East Coast in Eastern time, congratulations for staying up so late and, and being with us. My apologies for the uh, late kickoff here. It's game started at uh, 8.30 local time on the West Coast. And there again, this time uh, Zaboni couldn't get ahead to it. Mallory Pugh to play it wide. Davidson to play it in. Chile will take that final whistle, I think, right now. They'll go away, they'll learn from this, and we may see some kind of an improvement when they've had a chance to think about it and reorganize and uh, this time it's Francisca Lara 
has gone down with an injury and again I suspect it's a similar thing I'm not saying that isn't a painful one but um, they've got a few players going down here they've, they've needed the respite I just wonder whether this game will be in the, their legs still by Tuesday as well some of these players they've had to chase and chase and chase all night long recovery will be key for them I think she's hit there in the stomach, wasn't she, by the ball? You get the wind knocked out of here. You can't breathe for a good while. You get to see her go up, turn on the head. Gets a deflection. Painful one for Francisca Lara. Scored in that big 4 0 win they had over Argentina. Argentina will need a playoff victory. Against whoever finishes fourth in the CONCACAF qualifying, if they're going to make it through the World Cup. Calls their pony. You do have to congratulate Chile for actually making the World Cup for the very, very first time. But, uh, it's been a steep old mountain for them tonight, no question. Davidson. Here's Tiana Davidson again. On. Davidson, who we're told by camp insiders, is very bright. She likes to code. <laughs> Which threw the team for a little bit of a loop, some of them. Might have thrown somebody else in this booth a little bit of a loop, what that meant, but leave it alone. USA 3, Chile 0, the final score. Frankly, it could have been double that, maybe more. But uh, USA continue their unbeaten run. 20 games unbeaten now, and still they've never lost a game in California. There was never too much doubt about the result once Sienna Davidson had scored her very first US goal to put them ahead early on in the game. There was an own goal by Carla Guerrero. Make it two, and then in the second half... Kristen Press to get her third goal after she'd been denied from the penalty spot in a very contentious incident. Maybe we'll grab a word with Kristen Press when we come back. It's 3-0, the final score here. <laughs> 